No matter how you feel about nuclear energy, either in favor or against, there are some attractive advantages to using it as a means to power our world. Here are the top five advantages of nuclear power. The first is energy density. It is literally thousands of times more compact than fossil fuels. 10 grams of uranium in a reactor produces as much energy as a metric ton of coal. Compared to fossil plants, which need a nearly constant supply of gas or coal, nuclear plants can operate with the same uranium for months or years at a time, and can actually store additional years worth of uranium on site, which improves the reliability of their fuel supply if there was to be some sort of interruption. This extreme energy density means a much smaller amount of fuel needs to be extracted, fabricated, transported, and stored on site compared to fossil fuels. Years worth of uranium fuel can be delivered to a plant on the back of a few trucks compared to the mile-long trains or barges for coal. Very convenient if you're looking to stockpile energy supplies if a neighbor were to initiate some sort of blockade or other interruption. It also means less mining. Since uranium is relatively abundant in the Earth's crust, about as common as tin and about a hundred times more common than gold. At the current rate of consumption, the world has enough uranium to last over 200 years. Although, like mining anything else, not all of it is going to be easily accessible or cheap to get. And if we add more nuclear plants, similar to the ones we have already built, that number will reduce further or just make it more expensive. Still, even if there are 100 years of easily accessible and relatively cheap uranium in our future, it's not going to run out. Considering the potential of more advanced reactor designs that can significantly extend this number into the thousands of years, we're probably doing all right. High energy density also means that nuclear plants take up relatively little land compared to their renewable counterparts. Sun and wind are great, but they're just not very compact. A normal nuclear plant might occupy 4 square miles or 10 square kilometers. An equivalent solar farm would need 350 square kilometers of space, and wind would need almost twice that. You can argue about the specific numbers here, but nuclear will always be magnitude smaller. And that footprint is important because it allows nuclear plants to be built on smaller pieces of land closer to the cities that are using the electricity, reducing the cost and improving the efficiency of transmission. After all, producing electricity if no one's around isn't particularly useful. The second main advantage is that, despite what many people think, nuclear power is among the safest forms of energy generation. You can agree or disagree with this statement, but by one very meaningful statistical measure, deaths per power generated, nuclear energy is on par with renewables like wind, even after considering accidents like Chernobyl and Fukushima. This is because, one, a relatively large amount of energy comes from a relatively small number of power stations, and two, once constructed, nuclear plants tend to last a very long time, 40 to 60 years or more. All modern plants are designed with multiple independent layers of protection, a concept referred to as defense in depth. The worst accident in the US, Three Mile Island, experienced an actual meltdown of its reactor core. But the defense in depth design, such as the large containment domes, prevented the vast majority of radiation release. Estimates vary, but after multiple studies, the best information that we have is that people around the plant received equivalent of about half of a chest X-ray, or about 1% of the radiation they would receive just from normal background during the year anyway. The design of the plant did its job. One of the key reasons for nuclear power's exceptional safety record is how nuclear power plants operate and the culture of the workforce. People who enter or visit a nuclear plant for the first time often remark about how it is such a different environment from what they're used to. People hired to work at this facility, believe it or not, actually are aware that they are working at a nuclear plant, and therefore the educational background and working culture of these employees reflects a deep commitment and respect for safety in pretty much everything that they do. Unlike most other industries, nuclear plants don't compete by trying to keep the best practices to themselves. When it comes to safety, there's a saying, an accident anywhere is an accident everywhere. So these plants openly share operating experience, what's working well and what problems they have faced. They share this with the rest of the industry so that everybody can learn and improve. All of this required design and experience brings together another benefit, one that's maybe not so obvious, as with any specialized technology, it's going to create an ecosystem of supporting companies and people around it. And these people are going to have to be highly skilled with valuable jobs and salaries that match that. Engineers, scientists, operators, and even specialized mechanics will all be needed to design, build, and support a nuclear program. A country entering nuclear energy for the first time will create a whole new industry and infrastructure that wasn't there before. Over time, these specialized workers will create improvements and new value through innovation. 
Nuclear is somewhat unique in that it has a lot of room to advance, at least in a scientific sense. There's only so much innovation that can be done for a coal plant. We've been burning coal for hundreds of years, and our ability to efficiently extract energy from the stuff is pretty much already at its limit. But nuclear innovations are still happening, with improvements as much as 10 or 100 times still possible compared to the current technology. This can be from smaller, simpler designs, and reactors that use the same fuel for 40 years, and eventually fusion, which is seen as the holy grail of energy. The third advantage is that nuclear can substantially reduce global CO2 emissions. Electricity generation is already one of the largest sources of CO2 emissions, and as the world moves away from fossil fuels towards electrification, particularly for heating and transportation, we're going to need a lot more of it. Energy demand in North America and Europe is not expected to grow too rapidly overall, but in the developing and emerging markets like China and India, enormous growth is already coming. Global energy demand is expected to increase 47% by 2050, with fossil fuels still leading the way. Goals for meeting the targeted reductions in emissions are significantly off schedule, despite international accords like the Paris Agreement. Serious and radical changes to the way we generate electricity, build stuff, move stuff, heat and cool, are going to be needed to be able to reach these targets. That energy will need to be increasingly electrified, and it will need to be generated from non-carbon sources like wind, solar, hydro, and nuclear. Nuclear power plants, even after considering the initial construction, uranium mining, and eventual decommissioning of old units, are still on par with other sources like wind and solar, and certainly significantly less than fossil fuel plants. As many nations, companies, and individual people commit to net zero carbon emissions, nuclear power provides an energy-dense, reliable, and safe way to do that. Today, nuclear power is still one of the largest contributors, supplying about a third of the world's available low-carbon electricity. In the US, nuclear plants along with renewables have avoided millions of metric tons of CO2 emissions per year. Recognizing this significance, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change's recommended energy pathways call for a doubling or more of nuclear generation by 2050 in order to support the Paris Agreement's ambitious 1.5 degree centigrade limit and global temperature rise. Although it can be more expensive than renewables, a study by France's electrical grid operator found nuclear power plants to be competitive with renewables under most economic scenarios. Unless new nuclear power plant construction costs continue to climb and renewables become even cheaper, it is still economically worthwhile to build new nuclear plants. This also helps improve our diversity of energy sources, which can only be a good thing. The fourth big advantage is related to carbon reduction, but has to do with waste. Now, Nuclear waste is normally viewed as a bad thing, and I'm not going to argue that. In general, it's something to be avoided. However, spent nuclear fuel is solid and dense and easy to keep track of. It doesn't blow into the wind like coal plants for us to breathe in. In fact, if you take the entire volume of waste produced by the nuclear plants in the US, you could easily fit it onto a football field. And until we find a better use for the spent fuel, for example, using it in next generation reactors, it can be safely stored. The most practical solution we have at this time is to store the waste someplace safe, where we know the risk of accidents and release are essentially zero. The leader of this is Finland, which has nearly completed construction of its Onkolo waste facility. The massive underground facility is designed into the stable bedrock and is expected to accommodate the waste from Finland's five nuclear plants. The Onkolo repository is expected to open in 2023 and is large enough to accept canisters of spent nuclear fuel for around 100 years. At this point, the final encapsulation and burial will take place, and the access tunnel will be backfilled and sealed. Facilities like this, and another one under development in Sweden, are reasonable steps to deal with something that is otherwise left sitting around at hundreds of sites. And we know these types of deep storage facilities will work because geologists can look at the rocks and understand the environment. Another benefit of not spewing ash and dust into the air like a coal plant is that that is ash and dust that people don't have to breathe. In fact, a 2013 study by NASA showed that by using nuclear power instead of fossil fuel plants, this has prevented 1.84 million deaths due to avoiding air pollution. This might initially seem counterintuitive. After all, I can't really claim to have saved someone's life by preventing them from going skydiving. But if you think about it, it makes sense. Unlike skydiving, the demand for electricity is going to be the same, regardless of whether it's generated at a coal plant or a nuclear plant and by replacing a portion of what would have been otherwise generated at a coal plant with nuclear, 
there is a reduction in air pollution, and statistically fewer people will have gotten sick. The fifth advantage has to do with reliability. Nuclear power is stubbornly reliable as a source of electricity under many conditions. Unlike coal and natural gas, which need a nearly constant supply of fuel to keep operating, large nuclear plants can run for up to two years uninterrupted. Weather, time of year, and time of day all impact electricity production, particularly for renewables like wind and solar. The sun doesn't shine at night, and the wind doesn't always blow. Additionally, electricity usage isn't constant throughout the day. It varies depending on the location, but typically peaks in the morning and evenings and decreases overnight. This variable rise and fall in production and demand needs to be matched. Electricity is difficult to store in large quantities, so it has to be used as it is generated. Too much demand without production leads to blackouts. Too much generation without demand will break the system because the energy has to go somewhere. In the US, nuclear typically operates as a baseload source, providing a stable supply. As renewables come and go during the day and demand fluctuates, the gaps are filled in with quick sources like natural gas plants because they are easy to turn on and off. As more renewables come online and fossil plants are phased out, nuclear plants will take on this role, supporting the gap between supply and demand when there's no sun or wind. This is already the case in some countries with a lot of nuclear power, like France. There are some more extreme cases though. Seasonal weather and storms have shown that fossil fuel supply lines can be at risk. In 2021, Unexpected blizzards swept across Texas in the southern part of the U.S. The cold weather caused disruptions to gas production within the state, which led to decreased electrical generation, which further reduced gas production in a feedback loop. Millions were left without power in the freezing conditions. Of the state's four nuclear reactors, one had to shut down due to the cold of its exposed turbine, but the other three remained online throughout the blizzard. An evaluation after showed that simply insulating the exposed components would have prevented the reactor shutdown, keeping vital electricity available during the storms. Another potential source of interruption hasn't really been seen since the oil shocks of the 1970s. Political instability can cause many countries to rethink their energy supplies. Since it is often much more sudden, at least compared to climate change, countries tend to react more quickly and urgently than a problem that's going to take years to develop. If someone's holding your energy source and using it as a political weapon, you have to respond right away. During the 1970s oil crisis, France and Japan responded by building dozens of nuclear plants. More recently, we've seen similar behavior by several countries in the EU that have responded to disruptions to Russian gas by speeding up their transitions to clean power. The hardest hit may be Germany, which is dependent on Russia for its gas more than any of its neighbors. In 2011, following the Fukushima accident in Japan, Germany elected to phase out its entire nuclear fleet of 17 plants. The three remaining plants that are operating at the time of the conflict in Ukraine were scheduled to shut down by the end of that year. However, Germany's energy minister authorized a short extension for those three plants through the winter, but they would all still eventually be closed as planned. Other countries, like France, which generates around 70% of its electricity from nuclear energy, are better prepared and in many ways already operating in harmony with the increased renewables. So, nuclear energy offers a lot of unique benefits, but it's not all good. Click here to hear the other side, with five simple reasons why nuclear power is maybe not the best idea. If you found this useful, please consider liking or subscribing and all that good stuff. It really lets me know what to do to improve the content of this channel. And thanks for watching.